In today's show, we're looking ahead to Tuesday. In the NBA, there are three games on, the streaming options, what we're watching for. Mr. Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That's PrizePicks.com. The promo code is Locked On. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. We're here to talk about the three games on Tuesday, prime streaming territory. There's 11 games Monday. There's 12 on Wednesday. Yes, Obi, there definitely is 12 on Wednesday. And we're going to look to target the Tuesday games. There's only three of them, so it's limited options. But this is where you can make some value in your league. So, Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. First game is Celtics and Thunder. The Celtics are eight and a half point favorites here. No back-to-backs to worry about with any of these teams. We know that Jeremiah Robinson Earl is out. Alexei Pokashevsky is out. Usman Jeng is out. Boston's clean. There's no one that we need to worry about at this point. Something can always pop up, of course, as it usually does. But at this stage, their injury reporting is clean. So what we want to watch is Derek White. In fact, you may know him as Maximum Derek. Maximum Derek. White has seemingly won the battle with Malcolm Brogdon. White has played 33, 30, 30, 37, and 23 minutes, while Brogdon has played 17, 17, 21, and 20 in the last four games. Um, Interestingly, though, White did get benched second half against the Nuggets for Grant Williams to start. I don't think that White, or Brogdon for that matter, are must-roster 12-team league players, but on a day like this, then yes, we are looking at them, but we're watching mainly with White, the White-Grant Williams dynamic, and then the White-Brogdon dynamic. And the fact that I've got to mention two different dynamics with his playing time is what makes him unreliable. I also want to watch Rob Williams, because can my man just get to 25 minutes? Apparently not. The most he's hit is 22 minutes. Then he missed that game for illness, and he played 14, 21, 21, 19. He had another illness before yesterday's game. He played through it. He's producing. Like, Don't drop him. Don't do anything stupid. But that top... 30 upside, yeah, top 12 if you believe that turnovers are a realistic indicator of value, um, is not coming this season, I don't think, at least not for a while. I don't think they're pushing him to 30 minutes at all this year, like 25, 26. Maybe he pushes 30 in the playoffs, but I, I really don't think it's happening. For the Thunder, I do want to watch the Bronco, Jalen Williams. Broncos country, let's ride. Who has been top 50 over the last week, and now we've got a really good schedule situation for him. I think his minutes in the 27 to 30 minute range are secure. I don't think he's getting Aaron Wiggins DNP'd. I don't think he's playing a pocket chef's nine minutes or 12 minutes sort of situation. I think that he is locked in as a core quartet with Dort, Giddy, and Shea, who gets high 20s to 30 minutes every night. Now, he's not always going to be great. His three-point shooting has been poor, especially compared to where he was in college. He was a very good three-point shooter. I think there's room for that to improve. Um... But he's, especially with the schedule this week, like there is a ton of value in Jalen Williams and he probably should be on a roster. I also want to watch Aaron Wiggins, but that's a placeholder name for whatever bullshit goes on in the front court. Because last game, we got um, 23 minutes of Kenridge Williams. We got 14 minutes of Darius Baisley. We got 18 minutes of Pig Williams. We got 17 minutes of Mike Muscala. And we got a DNP from Wiggins, who'd played 17 and 24 the previous two games. So there's those five players who they're just going to rotate in and out and in and out through that vacant center position, making it impossible to really have any value in anyone there. Yeah, Jalen Williams, the pig, theoretically, could be a useful player, Vietnamese legend Jalen Williams. Mike Muscala, the moose, he could theoretically have value if he played 25 minutes. If Aaron Wiggins played 28 minutes, he could theoretically have value. I just don't trust any of them to be able to do it. So we want to see if any pattern emerges but I'll bet you that we don't. We don't get anything resembling consistency with these guys at all. Because let's be honest, they're not that good. And that is why Dagnod is able to move them around and interchange what fits best or who's playing well at any given time. 
The next game we look at is the Wizards and the Bucks. Um, at this point, we know that James Middleton is out. Unfortunately, he's out Tuesday, Wednesday again. Him returning this week seems doubtful. Um, Drew Holiday is questionable with an illness, while the big fella Yanni is also questionable. Now, they do have the Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back. I think it's fair to assume that Giannis isn't playing in both of those games. I don't know that for sure, but I think it's fair to assume that. And that's going to give, with Middleton out, boosts to a lot of their guys like Portis, Connaughton, Carter, Ingles maybe, although I don't think Ingles is playing both of these games either, um, Grayson Allen. On the Wizards side, Beal is questionable. And Dan Gafford tweaked his ankle at the end of Sunday's game. They said he's fine. I don't ever believe that, but we'll find out. Now on Gafford, you can see his picture on the thumbnail. You can see it. And you know what? I know you're going to type it. Well, let me, let me tell you first. Daniel Gafford's a must roster player. One, two, three. But he only plays two games this week, Josh. I know. I know. And it doesn't matter. It, it honestly doesn't matter. And honestly, if he misses this game, it also doesn't matter. Daniel Gafford's a must roster player. They've won five consecutive games with him starting. He's playing 24 to 27 minutes a night. He can get blocks. He can get field goal percentage. He can get rebounds. He can be a double-digit scorer. It is working with him in the starting lineup at the moment. You've got to roster him, and it does not matter if he misses one game or, honestly, both games this week. I do want to watch to see if he plays and what he produces, but I don't care if he doesn't, and I do not care in the slightest that he plays two games this week. Now, for some of the other guys, Denny Avdia, Rui Hachimura, Monte Morris, who might have short-term stream value if Beal is out, then yeah, I care a little bit that they play only two games because their value is really fleeting. Like Morris is not a must-roster 12-team league guy. Rui Hachimura is not a must-roster 12-team league guy. Denny Avdia is not a must-roster 12-team league guy. And their value comes from Beal being out. But if Beal, like, it might be one game. So they're not guys to sacrifice long-term value for. In saying that, I do want to watch Rui, whose last few games have been really good. He's shooting the lights out, which is literally impossible to continue at that level. Like, he just cannot continue shooting 65% from the field. It won't happen. And he doesn't offer much in other areas. He's never a high-volume three guy. He's not a high rebound. He's not a high assist guy. He's not a steals guy. He's not a blocks guy. He's not a high-volume free throw attempt player. He's a scoring player who's benefiting from increased minutes, increased using, and increased shooting. The triple whammy. Right? But if Beal is out, we do use him. And on a low-volume day... He does become 12-team streamable, Rui. I want to see if... Maybe he, maybe he is now one of the most efficient shooters in the league. Maybe that is true. Maybe that's who he is now. I would like to see 30 games of that before I buy into it. Shit, in Terry Rogier's case, I saw two years of it and it still wasn't true. So I don't really buy this with Rui, but there is increased opportunity, especially if Beal is out. The other guy you can stream if Beal misses is Kispert, especially if you're looking for three-pointers and a little bit of scoring, but not much else. On the Bucks, I want to watch Punch Bob especially if Giannis is out, he's going to have big value. Now, I'm not going to fully get the idea of where Bobby Portis's value sits unless Middleton returns because I do think he's going to drop off. But there is another opportunity here for him to put up big numbers. And Joe Ingles was really poor last game, but he has got 16 assists combined in the last two games. And for any league, that is useful. Now, scoring zero points doesn't help, but 16 assists does. So he's going to sit one of these jingle. He's going to sit uh, 12, uh, 12. He's going to sit Tuesday or Wednesday, one of those two days. And we hope that he sits Wednesday and plays Tuesday because then he does have streaming appeal for those assists. But I want to see what he looks like. Is he an 18 minute a night player or a 25 minute a night player? That's key, I think, for us with him and his streaming value moving forward. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy, but not daily fantasy as you know it. It is daily fantasy made easy. Instead of the old daily fantasy with salary caps and thousands of people, it's you just versus player projections. Joe Ingles might have an assist line of two and a half. You say, oh, I think he's going to get more than that. You might see Bob Portis with a rebound number of eight and a half, and you go, oh, if Giannis is out, he's going over. So we put more. Two to six individual player projections into a lineup, into an entry, and you can win up to 25 times back. And you can do those entries in under 60 seconds. You can do them in over 30 US states and in Canada and for a multitude of sports. The NFL, the NHL, college basketball, college football, NASCAR, PGA, boxing, cricket, European basketball, and of course, the greatest sport of all, disc golf, which I believe the season's starting up soon. I can't wait. Download the PriceWix app or go to PriceWix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, PriceWix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PriceWix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. The third game of the day, 
The last game of the day is the Utah Jazz taking on the Sacramento Kings. The Jazz are three-point favorites at home here, and all the, in- the only injury is the Padawan, Colin Sexton's out with a hamstring flare-up. So that's it. Both teams healthy. Apart from that, on the, ja- uh, the, on the Jazz, on the Kings, I want to watch Keegan Murray. I, he is not a 12-team league player, but, but we're talking low-volume game, so he's usable. But he's not a must-roster guy as we move forward. And I don't know that he's going to convince me otherwise. He might have a good game here, but we have seen sprinklings of good games. And then there's three bad ones. And there's one stinker. Then there's a good one. Then there's two bad ones. Then there's a stinker. Like, it's just two all over the place. And he's more suited to 16-team leagues. But with three games on, if he's on the wire, good stream. Malik Monk, similarly, I think he's actually more valuable than Keegan Murray in fantasy this season, but he is inconsistent. He's a points and threes guy, much like his contemporary on the Jazz, Malik Beasley. Use him on days like this when you need points and threes with some free throw percentage, add some assists in, it's useful. He struggles in a lot of areas and he can go cold with his shot, but the minutes, the production, the role is relatively secure. On the Jazz with Sexton out, remember the Jazz have the best schedule this week. Four games, four low volume days. So Nikhil Alexander-Walker is going to be usable. Is he going to be within the top 100 players for the week on a per-game basis? Almost definitely not. Could he be in the top 100 players for the week on a a total basis? Yeah, especially when you consider that we have big volume days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, where streamable players aren't useful. So you might get 18 minutes a night for four nights for Alexander Walker, 70, 80 minutes worth of action, six steals, maybe five steals, 15 assists, it's useful enough. But let's see what he's able to do. What do the minutes look like? Also, Walker Kessler. The big fella played 30 minutes last game and Vanderbilt did not. Kessler was preferred over him, didn't get in foul trouble, and remains a must roster player. Over 40% of people don't seem to believe that. Well, sorry, yeah, over 40% of people don't believe it. Actually, more than that, because there's over 40% of leagues that he's available in. And there are going to be people in leagues where he is roster will go, why are you holding on to Walker Kessler? You need to hold on to Walker Kessler. He's a must-roster player. And we'll get another opportunity to see what the Vanderbilt Kessler minutes look like. Because that is really key for where we we value him. Again, must-roster player. But where we value him, how we approach him, what is his actual upside, is going to be determined by how the minutes trend continues to look. In terms of streaming, the only two teams who play the Tuesday-Thursday combo, I'm not looking at Tuesday-Wednesday because there are 12 games on Wednesday. Streaming on Wednesday, useless. We're looking at Celtics and Jazz players on Tuesday and Thursday because they're the two teams that play on those low-volume days. Today's episode is also brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. All professional leagues, amateur leagues, they're all there, including the NFL, Week 18 coming up, college football with a couple of games left, the NBA, college basketball, so many sports. It's all there at BetOnline.net. Do you know that Georgia over at betonline.net is 13-point favorites against TCU, who just throttled Michigan, didn't throttle them, but scored 51 on Michigan? And Georgia's 13-point favorites. Do you think that's fair? I don't. So if you think TCU, as the underdog, has a chance, you can go check it out at betonline.net. It's always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Let's do streaming now for Tuesday with only three games on. Who are we looking at? Let's do it again. Dan Gafford, add him and let's enjoy it. And if he doesn't play, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Guys who don't have injury questions, Malik Monk, good stream. The Bronco, Jalen Williams and his teammate, Lou Dort. No, my son is also named Bort. I don't love Dort for 12-team category league guy. Not at all. But he is today or on Tuesday. Grayson Allen dropped in eight assists last game with Drew and Giannis out. So if those guys are out, and I think there's a decent chance Giannis sits out at least, then Allen's value rises. Grant Williams, Mike Muscala, which is I'm just, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you throw Pig Williams in there, I don't know. It's really tough. And then Pat Connaughton. So it does drop off in terms of quality streams. Alexander Walker, you could potentially throw in there. You're streaming Alexander Walker for the four games, not specifically just for the Tuesday. For deeper leagues, Grayson Allen, Mike Muscala, Paddy Connaughton, Dillon Wright, he's an option as well, even in standard leagues. Alexander Walker, Pig Williams, Isaiah Joe, Jinglin Joe Ingles, also worth a stream when you're looking for those assists. And for points leagues, these guys are all available in over 40% of leagues. Dan Gafford, Lou Dort, Walker Kessler, (laughs) Malik Monk, Jalen Williams, Maximum Derek White, Malik Beasley, and Rui Hachimura, all absolutely worth streaming 
in points league formats. And honestly, if they're available in category leagues, you stream all of those guys. Well, we don't stream more. You're not adding eight players to your roster, but all of them are worth looking at and using in category leagues. But more specifically here for points leagues, this is probably my order of preference as to how I would add them in my points league. We're looking at the next four days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Tuesday is a good day for streaming. Thursday is a good day for streaming. Wednesday and Friday are not. They are high volume days. So who are the guys that benefit from the low volumes? Well, as I said, it's Jazz and Celtics. So we've got Walker Kessler with two games, Derek White with two low-volume days uh, games, Malik Beasley, Grant Williams, and Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Those five players are all rotation players who have enough value to be used and added in basically any league with two games over the next four days on low-volume days. These other players, Gafford, Monk, and Fultz, only have one low-volume game. But remember, there's only three games that played, three teams that played, Tuesday, sorry, try again. Three games on Tuesday, four games on Friday, so finding a low-volume guy who's useful and quite good is not easy. And Gafford, Monk, and Fultz, of the guys who only play the one, Fultz on the, um, not, Fultz on the Thursday, Gafford and Monk on the Tuesday, um, they have value and appeal there because they are quite good players and they're available. If you look at the next four days in totality, who are some guys that are worth grabbing and you'd start them irrespective of games? So on a per-game basis, I think these guys are all top 100 over the next four days. The Tank Tom Bryant, he's still around. He's still available. He's got two games in the next four days. Dan Gafford, I've spoken ad nauseum. Killian Hayes, he's going to miss the game on Monday, but he's still got two more day, two more games between Tuesday and Friday. And I think he's a 12-team league guy. Um, Naz Reed also got two games in that four-day four period. You've got DiVincenzo only having one game, but I, I'd still have him. I know Wiggins might return. He might not. But DiVincenzo is worth rostering and having and starting until we see what happens there. And then uh, Marco Fultz has got two games as well. He plays the Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back. And the Wednesday game is going to have Franz Wagner suspended. So Fultz is going to have value to even start on that big volume Wednesday, I think. And then the Thunder guys have three games. So do the the Pistons guys over the next... um, No, they don't. Sorry. It's just the Thunder that have that three-game combination. And the Bucks have got... Between Tuesday and Friday, they've got three games. Thunder and Bucks. Jalen Williams, three games, next four nights, absolutely worth it. Lou Dort, three games, next four nights, including Tuesday. Worth streaming just to get a little bit of extra boost in there. Not as good as Jalen Williams, but just to get a little bit of an extra boost in there. And that, guys, will do it for me today. Short and sharp with a three-game day on. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you're here on YouTube, you thumb it up and you leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.